everybody, it's Jeff Schmidt, and today I want to show you uh, some ways to do adaptive submixing of your music for an interactive environment such as a video game. And we're going to be using a couple of free tools. One of them is called FMOD at fmod.org, and one is Audacity, which is also for free. And you'll get links to both these in a few minutes. Uh, before I start and jump in, I just want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Pyramind in San Francisco. They're an instructional and production facility, and specifically Paul Lipson, who is the COO there, who, and he's also the uh, president of the Game Audio Network Guild, who taught these techniques in a game audio class I took, and now I'm turning around and showing them to you. Uh, so first, I'm going to assume uh, that you have some music that you've created. Uh, I'm going to pull Pro Tools session to show you a song. Uh, basically, I created a cue for, let's say it's a level within a game. And uh, what I want to be able to do in the game is have the music level change based on what the player is doing. So and the, the assumption is you enter a level, it's kind of low intensity, and as you work through the level, the intensity ramps up. And you want the music to interact with those behaviors and kind of adapt to that. So one of the ways to do this, and there's a, lots of different ways of doing this, but one of the ways to do this is to create various submixes of your, of your cue and then be able to fade dynamically in between them based on where you are in the game state. So what I have here is basically this one song, one cue, that I've done four submixes of, and then a, a, an Atmos mix or an atmosphere mix. So you can see like this is the full version here and I've, I've printed the actual track down here. Then I've done a reduction, which is kind of like, takes a lot of stuff out, mutes a lot of these instruments here to create a, another version. Then I've muted even more to create more of a percussion version, and then this is strictly percussion here with some Atmos, and then just a strict Atmos track. So I have basically five levels here, and if we just listen to some of this stuff. That's my mini level. I think I got click track coming in here too, right? Um... Another level here. And then uh, a full version here. So I've got my five levels of mix here. All right, so basically I just did five submixes. Now I'm bounce them down and export these files as stereo wave files. So I can get rid of Pro Tools for now. And here is my submixes. So each one of these is one of those submixes. Now in order to be able to fade between them, there's lots of different ways you can do it, but the easiest way is to create a multi-channel wave file. And by that, I don't mean, uh, and it shouldn't be confused with like a surround sound file. This is just a straight up multi-channel wave file where all, where all these wave files are combined into one wave file. And there's a really easy way to do this. And it's going to be so cool when you learn this. It's just Audacity is really all you need. We'll create a new project in Audacity. Audacity, by the way, if you're using version 1.9 or 1.3.9 and above, if you're seeing this at a later date, uh, this will create the files for you, and you can get it at audacity.soundforge.net for free. It's open source. So all we have to do now is drag these tensions in here. Now, you have to be careful about how you want them laid out in here, because when we get into the next section with FMOD, we have to know what channels, what tension level is on. So I just, as a habit, just uh, did them by alphabetically. I put A, B, C, D, E uh, on there. So I could literally just take these and drag them in here knowing my light soundscape is here and then my full mix is there and, and then the graduations are in between. And that's just an easy way for me to drag and drop it into Audacity and just have it automatically populate the tracks from light to heavy. So there's my light, medium, medium heavy, boom, boom, right? All right, so now what do we do with this? Select all, export. Uh, you can put in metadata, and I obviously suggest that if you're doing this professionally, you should. But for demo purposes, we're going to skip this step. And then it's going to say, where do you want to put this thing? And we're going to put it here with our demo, and we're going to call it uh, demo 
full MC for multi-channel. Save. Now watch this. Check this out. So it's going to show me now all 10 channels of audio, and it's going to say where each channel is going. Now the cool thing about this is you can actually route this to different spots. Uh, you can say, you know what, I want that one to go down there. <laughs> now I'm not sure exactly why you'd need to do that, but if you, if you have a creative reason to move audio around or have it going to different places or even several places, uh, it's totally possible to do. And that's what's really cool about this. And then I just export it. Boom. It's going to save it as a single file with all those tracks embedded. Yes, and we can get rid of that. And here is, in the same folder, my multi-channel wave. Now, if you look at the original wave files, these are all 16.44.1. At a minute and 41 seconds, it's 16.9 megabytes. That's the way it should be at 44.1. But when you go to the multi-channel watt file at 141, it's 84.7 megabytes. So that's all 10 ch channels of audio right there. Okay, so now from here, we're going to put this puppy into F mod where we're going to decide which layer to play based on game state changes. And that's going to be in the next video. Make sure to check that out, part two.